hear the birds chirping? Hello, hi, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Good morning again. Hello. Now it is 7.24 a.m. my time. The video I did earlier this morning was at 3 in the morning uh, sometime. So, what is the image of God? And what about this image of man? Image of Adam. What is this image of God? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. I expect you to. And I'm going to address you as though you are, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and verse 27. In this video, I want you to keep in the back of your head two words. Similitude and likeness. Similitude and likeness. Remember those, okay? We'll touch on that in a little bit. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and verse 27. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. First appearance of the word likeness here in the scriptures is right there. Likeness, okay? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So, verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image. Our image. After our likeness. After our likeness. Go to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. A, a brother of mine, my best friend, and a dearly, dearly beloved sister stirred this. And this was a question that came up between my best friend and I and um, kind of left it on the back burner because when this came up initially, I didn't, I was dumbfounded by it. So recently. So this is kind of a collaborated effort. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray God you're whole, okay? Spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 1 again, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. In our image. Uh, image of God, uh, as I recall, appears three times. Image of God. Okay? So, just so you know. Okay? But, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, our image. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23 again. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. A lot of people like to say it backwards, body, soul, and spirit. 
Scripture, spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. God has a soul, God the Father. God has a body, the Word made flesh. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. These three are one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one, one God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So, made in the image of God, meaning spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But now, looking at verse 26 in Genesis chapter 1 again. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Man was created to have dominion over everything. Okay? You say so right there. But what about after our likeness? Okay? James chapter 1. James chapter 1. What is this, our likeness? Likeness. Okay? After our likeness. James chapter 1. If I can get there. James chapter 1, verses 13 and on to verse 15. James chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Okay, any man. God, what does that say there? God cannot be tempted with evil. But think about this. Satan in the wilderness, when he tempted the Lord Jesus Christ, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, okay? He was fasting, okay? And Satan came along and tempted what? The skin suit, the flesh, okay? That's what Satan tempted. Because what does this verse say here? For God cannot be tempted with evil. But yet Satan tempted Jesus. Right? So again, what was his temptation aimed at? Seeing that the flesh. You look in Luke chapter 4. We're not going to look at that today. We covered that quite a few times. All of that was a temptation. All of what uh, Satan tempted the Lord with was aimed at his flesh. Because God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? But the temptation of Satan was aimed at the flesh. The flesh which, which is corruptible. Okay? Let's continue. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, verse 13 tells us God cannot be tempted with evil. Okay? And then verses 14 and 15 talk about, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay? Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Who knew no sin. Uh, God cannot sin. Okay? God cannot sin. God cannot be tempted with evil. But yet Satan tempted Jesus. Again, Satan's temptation was aimed at the skin suit. The flesh. Okay? The word is, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. The scripture. Okay? Seven times in the scripture. Capital W, Word, appears. 
okay? Every single one of those times, it's a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? God cannot be corrupted. God cannot sin, okay? It says so right there. For he hath made him to be sin for us, meaning he took our punishment for us on the cross, which we so richly deserve, okay? Who knew no sin, that he might that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. First John chapter three verses one under verse six. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew not, because it knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay? Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Like him when he shall appear. For we shall see him as he is. Now hold up. See, we the church of the living God, we are going to get redeemed, caught up, resurrected. Okay? And when we get redeemed, caught up, we are going to be with the Lord and hence... We won't be troubled with sin anymore. So, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, perfect in a glorified body. We, when we get caught up, resurrected, redeemed, okay, to be with the Lord, we are going to be having a resurrected body, we are going to have no sin because we're going to be likened unto the angels, remember, okay? Let's continue. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, who is in him? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Now people will go to verse 6 and say, that means sinless perfection. No, look at the verse. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Who is to him abiding in Christ Jesus? Okay? To abide in him. Jesus Christ lives within, a, within us. You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. That circumcision made without hands. Okay? The Lord lives within us. Okay? Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, we're going to keep reading, okay? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteousness is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9 ties this all up. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now hold up. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. When you are born again, okay, and a new creature in Christ Jesus, when the Lord saves you, what happens to you? You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. You are sealed with that spirit of promise, are you not? We are the seed of Abraham through faith. 
by grace through faith, right? Okay? Look at verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You are born again if you are saved, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus. And what happens again? You are sealed until the day of redemption. Sealed, meaning eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. You cannot lose what is not yours. It is not your salvation. It is the Lord's salvation. It is his gift to you by grace through faith. Okay? So, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his, for his seed remaineth in him. What is the seed here? The seed there is a reference unto the Holy Ghost. Okay? For his seed remaineth in him. That's a reference unto the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, the Lord is that spirit. Right there. That is referring unto the Holy Ghost that is within us. Okay? Because, look at that. For his seed remaineth in him. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Semicolon. Continuing the thought in the sentence. For his seed remaineth in him. Colon. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Why is that? Because you are sealed until the day of redemption. You have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, dwelling within you. And He cannot sin. And He will not guide you onto sin. Verse 9 is talking about the Holy Ghost. The unction from the Holy One. Okay? Um, look in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be, made, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Verse 9 in chapter 3. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Uh, verse 20 in chapter 2. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. Okay? That seal, that circumcision made without hands, which is Christ Jesus. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Born again. Okay? When the Lord saves you, when you come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord, and he save you, he seals you until the day of redemption, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You have God living within you, and God living within you cannot sin but that doesn't make you sinless does it no why because god ain't pointing a gun at your head to do anything you have free will see our spirit and soul are housed in the skin suit the flesh okay and it is a war against the spirit and the flesh daily every single day brethren okay okay but that seed that is in you, which is the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that Spirit, you know, God our Father, that seed, that unction from the Holy One, that seal. Okay, do you get the point? Yes? He cannot sin. He will not guide you on to sin. See? Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil... Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? So, if you're born of God, you have that seed within you, the Holy Ghost, okay? And verse 8 is talking about those who are not saved, those who are not sealed. Why? He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? Look at that verse again. He that committeth sin is of the devil. You're not saved, not 
regenerate, okay? You don't have the Lord Jesus Christ living within you. You are of this world. Ye are of your father, the devil, whether you want to accept that or not. See, verse 8 is talking in contrast to those who are lost. Verse 9 is talking in contrast to those who are saved. What's the point of all this? Look at verse 9. Don't look at me. Look at verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, colon, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Okay? Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 again. I closed my place. Now, let's read this again. And God said, Let us make man in our image, spirit, soul, and body. After our likeness. Likeness. After our likeness. Question. When was this, when was Genesis chapter 1 written? But had the fall of man happened yet? No. So, being made in the likeness of God here, and God said, let us make man in our image, spirit, soul, and body, after our likeness. God cannot sin. Man, when he was created first, okay? Okay. Adam was created. Man was created, guess what, guess what, guess what? Sinless. There was no sin. So where it says here, don't look at me. And God said, let us make man in our image, spirit, soul, and body, after our likeness. After our likeness. Likeness. Sinless. This was before the fall of man. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, in the beginning, before the fall, we are created in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. But the likeness there in verse 26 when look at the look at the context this is genesis the beginning chapter 1 there was no sin so in his, in after our likeness meaning sinless there was no sin when man was created after our likeness verse 27 so god created man in his own image spirit soul and body in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hmm. First Corinthians. I, I, I beg your pardon, brethren. I, I ought to, I ought to put a, <laughs> I ought to put a ribbon marker in there instead of, okay. Okay, there we go. Got a ribbon marker in there. <laughs> uh, First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 7 is what we want. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. One of the things I truly believe Satan, why he hates us so much, uh, because it's prophesied in Genesis chapter 3 about how he'll go upon his belly eating dust and we are dust, that kind of thing. But what does that say? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image, spirit, soul, and body, and glory of God. The glory of God. Man, his creation is the glory of God. We were made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. We were created and first in his likeness, sinless. But right here it says that for as much as he is the image and glory of God, the glory of God. 
one of uh, what does this mean? It's his glory. Man is the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. So, look at the verse again. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Man is the image and glory of God. Male and female created he them. Both male and female are created in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. We already saw that. But the glory of God is man. But the woman is the glory of the man. The glory of God is the man. But the woman is the glory of man. Hmm. Go back to Genesis now. Aha! Got my ribbon marker. Actually, two of them. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25 now. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. There are some disgusting perverts out there who will go to verse 20. I have seen this and will point to verse 20 as a means to justify bestiality. With the sexual perversion that is in this country and the pornography uh, epidemic, I, you can't, I wish that was an exaggeration. There are perverts out there who will say, And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. I have heard people say that Adam was... You get the picture. Absolutely disgusting. Beware if you ever run into that. that that'll make you vomit. But let's continue, okay? And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man... Oh, wait, wait, I skipped one. Excuse me. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of, the, one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman... And brought her on to the man. So man was made first, and the woman was made for man. Some of you feminazis out there, you're going to have to deal with that. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does woman mean? Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, again, verse 24, these people who believe in the ridiculous gap theory will say, well, Adam and Eve must have had a mother and father. Chapter and verse, please. <laughs> or, excuse me, where is that in the scriptures? Verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why? Because there was no sin. There was no sin in the world, brethren. We are made in the image of God. But the likeness talked about in verse 26 meant sinless no sin in verse 25 and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed okay now Genesis chapter 3 
the fall, the fall of man. Yea, hath God said. Satan going after Eve. Okay? Satan going after Eve. Where was Adam? We don't know. We do know this, that he was, uh, he wasn't around there for his wife. Maybe he was doing some farming. Maybe he was doing something. We don't know. But Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. Now this is after the fall and that old uh, nature, uh, the Adamic nature it is referred to as, where Adam blamed, it's like, the woman that thou gavest to me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Adam doing what a lot of lost people do. They make excuses. They want to blame other people. Okay, they point the finger. Uh, Adam blamed God, blamed the woman, but ultimately blamed God, taking half responsibility. Eve, we all know, Eve, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The devil made me do it, okay? But, verses 16 on to verse 24. Pay attention. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now with that verse right there, that kind of gives us a glimpse that before sin came into the world, okay, remember, verse 25 in Genesis chapter 2, they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. There was no sin, okay? The relationship between Adam and Eve, the covenant of marriage, if you will, was in its purest form. Why? Because there was no sin, okay? Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 talks about reasons for marriage. You know, if a, if a man can't control himself, if he can't contain his virgin or whatever, let him marry. It's better to marry than to burn. Okay, some people, I know of a brother in Spain who uh, praised the Lord for you, brother. Um, he's a virgin and in his 20s at this time period. We pray for you every day, brother. Love you. But uh, he's a virgin. The Lord is um, strengthening him, quickening him in that gift. Me, on the other hand, <laughs> okay? okay, but there's a difference. But see, Originally, for sin, this tells us that marriage between Adam and Eve was a lot different. Why do you say that? Look at that. Verse 16. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He's to be the head. Okay? That's throughout the entirety of Scripture, by the way. And unto Adam he said... Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. See, even before the fall, Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve. Adam should have been there to, you know, to, you know, been there to, you know, like, hey, get away from there. Don't, don't, no, put that down, okay? He should have been there. He wasn't, okay? He wasn't. Doing what we don't know, okay? But, with that regard, he was still the head. But the dynamic between them was different. Obviously, we see that because of verse 16. Okay? And our Lord is clear here. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it, all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Verse 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Satan, the devil, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You and I, we're made out of dust. 
Verse 20. And Adam called his wife's, wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Something had to die. Animals. I, I've talked about this before. Okay. I've talked about this before. I'm not going to get into it. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Okay, why did we read this? Up to here, we do not see any reference at all of Adam and Eve having children. Do we? No. All we know is what? That man was created in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body, and originally in his likeness, meaning sinless. Here, Genesis chapter 3, they done sinned. And if we, if you were to read the whole chapter on your own time, please do. Uh, they, uh, they sewed up fig leaves because they knew that they were naked and they were ashamed. Okay, And then they heard the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the voice of the Lord walking. How does a voice walk unless he has a body? Okay? Okay? It's a saying. Okay? But sin was introduced because they disobeyed. It wasn't, it wasn't by faith. They saw God, they saw God walking in the cool of the garden. They heard the voice of the Lord walking, okay? Okay, they could see God. They had, it was by works. They had one commandment to do. One, don't eat of that tree. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? They did. Hence, sin sin okay but until this point you don't see anything of them having children until you come to genesis chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 now remember where we looked at um verse 16 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay? Look at this. I just want to bring this to your attention. Something for you to gnaw on. Okay? And Adam knew uh, Genesis 4, verses 1 and 2. And Adam knew, his, knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, Who said? Eve, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Hmm. Hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was the tiller of was a tiller of, of the ground. Why why are we looking at that? Well, I want you to think about this. I'm not on this on your own. Look at verse 1. And Adam knew his knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She had gotten a man from the Lord. Sounds kind of almost a little feministic. Maybe. In verse 2, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay? Look at verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. It's like, okay, Brad, why are we looking at this? Do you see in verse 1, 
Go ahead and um, scan over the whole chapter of Genesis chapter 4. The first record of Adam and Eve having children. Any mention of a likeness there? Hmm? Show it to me. Put it in the comment section. Show it to me. I don't see it. See, again, you have to remember the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, spirit, soul, and body. I'm going to drive that home into your head till you get it. Okay? The Trinity is satanic. One God of three persons. Oh, give me a break. Okay? God has a body, soul. I, God has a spirit, soul, and body. I almost said it backwards myself. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, sinless. Until, until man fell. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay? That likeness, that sinlessness, is gone. You don't, mention, you don't see anything mentioned about likeness. Likeness of, of God or whatever. You don't see it here. Why? Because sin was in the world now. This was a different dispensation. The very first dispensation, people, was by works. They could see the Lord. They saw him. He said, don't eat of the tree. They didn't need faith. It was works in the first dispensation. That ended with disobedience and they and the Lord done killed an animal to give them coats, coats of skin, kicked them out, ended the very, very first dispensation. Anyone wants to tell you it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation, you can debunk them very quickly with just reading Genesis chapters 1 through 3. Very simple to debunk. Okay? But, again, you don't see any mention of likeness. Why is that? Now, go to Genesis chapter 5. Check this out. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. And here's what stumped my, my best friend and I on this very thing. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man... In the likeness of God made he him. He made him originally sinless. Yes, he did. Man at his creation was sinless. Okay? Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So see, verse 2 proves that likeness there mentioning in verse 5, in uh, chapter 5, verse 1, is making a reference on to verse 26. And yeah, you check the, check the mar margin in your uh, scriptures right there. Mine has clearly chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Okay? So, the likeness there is reminding us that originally man was made sinless. Okay? You with me so far? Okay. And Adam, now note from verse 3 now on to verse 5, the contrast between verses 1 and 2 and verse 17 in chapter 4. Okay, note these contrasts. And Adam lived 130 years and begat, and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth after his image what image is that was he his carbon copy twin no we are made in the image of God okay what does this mean a son in his own likeness sinful man sin was in the world okay Seth was born a sinner you might be saying, Brad, what about Cain and Abel? One second. 
One second, we'll get to that. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Okay? So, a son in his own likeness, fallen Adam. In his own likeness, born in sin. You're, you're saying to me, well, Brad, what about Cain and Abel? Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 22 on to verse 29. Check this out. For as in Adam all die. We just looked at it. Because sin was brought into the world. Okay? The original likeness at creation, meaning sinless, was lost when sin was introduced. When they disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. Okay? And Seth was born in his own, in Adam's own likeness. Sinful. Okay? Not sinless. Sinful. We are made in the image of God. After his own image. Meaning, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Man became a living soul. Okay? Let's continue. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he, hath, but when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is ex accepted, which did put all things under him. Let me read that again. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? Meaning, in the name of Jesus Christ. You know how it says, I, I'll go baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Uh, there is only one name given on, among men under heaven by which, by, why, by which we must be saved, Jesus Christ. I totally believe through scripture that scriptural baptism is, I baptize you in Jesus Christ's name, in the name of the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one, one name, Jesus Christ, okay? Verse 29 again. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? <laughs> Tell me about it. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, men, who are like brute beasts. Okay? What advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. See, there again, people, um, if the catching away doesn't happen anytime soon, within the next decade, um, we're sealed until the day of redemption. We have hope. Don't ever lose hope if it doesn't if it doesn't happen in the spring next year, next three years, next five years, next ten years. I hope it does. But um, and so do you. 
But even so, okay, don't ever lose your hope if you're thinking like it's going to come next spring. I hope it does. And if it doesn't, even so, thy will be done, Lord. But you don't lose hope. Okay? I talked about this actually in the previous video. Okay? So, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Yes, that's why in light of the times that the, the catching away could happen at any time, like I've said before, I do personally believe that in accordance with Scripture, it will happen in the springtime. But hey, I could be wrong about that. Oh, yeah, I've been wrong about a lot of things. A lot of things. But I could be wrong about that. It could happen today. Okay? That's why, in light of what's happening in the world today, you and I as a church of the living God, we ought to get busy serving the Lord in whatever capacity He has called you in and whatever it is He has called you to. Okay? You ain't going to get me away from that. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. That which thou sowest is not quicken, quicken made alive. Thank you, brother. Oh, I just lost my place. Except it die. In order for something to be quickened, made alive, something has to die. Hmm. You know, to be born again. And his seed remaineth in him. Get it? Okay, let's go. Let's continue. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. One of these days, Lord willing, do a video on the sea on seeds. Wow. As the Lord wills. Let's continue. All flesh is not the same flesh. No matter what genetically modified engineering <laughs> tries to do. Okay? But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts another of fishies, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. The body of the, the, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, celestial. It is raised in incorruption, terrestrial. It is sown in dishonor, sinful flesh that corrupts, that ages, that scars. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Raised in power. A body that can go through walls, that won't age, and no sin. How many of you who deal with physical ailments? My friend in Canada. My friend in Canada. My best friend. Hmm? Jeff, those of you who suffer physically, yeah, a new body, no pain, no sin. 
It has sown a natural body, celestial. It has raised a spiritual body, terrestrial. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a... Don't look at me. Living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Alive in Christ. Quickening, alive. Thank you, brother, for that. Thank you. But the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. We're made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Those who are filthy, let them be filthy still. Unregenerate. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. With our glorified bodies, but also that we have our mind on heavenly things, not things of this earth. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, spirit, soul, and body, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. The image of the heavenly. Where we will be in the likeness of God, meaning sinless. We won't be, a, we won't be God, of course, no. But there will be no sin. There will be no pain. Now, now, what about Cain and Abel? I have a video where I addressed this before called the Serpent Seed Doctrine. Okay? Let's, let's go back to Genesis chapter 4. Okay? Very quickly, you see in uh, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and verse 17, no mention of any likeness. Okay, you see likeness appear again in Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. Okay, Abel. Abel then got killed by Cain, did he not? Boop. Yes, he did. Cain. Cain had children. But here's what I personally believe. Why do you not see any likeness to Cain and Abel mentioned or anything like that? But see it in Genesis chapter 5. Why? Does our God, our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ know everything? Come on. Come on, tell me. Does our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ know everything? Yes or no? Okay. He knew what was going to happen in the garden. He gave Adam the chance to man up. He didn't take it. He's like, okay. He gave Eve the chance to woman up. She didn't take it. He knew what happened. Okay, nothing, nothing passes our father's eyes. You're not going to pull the wool over our father's eyes, okay? Do you think it's possible that God knew that both Cain and Abel their bloodline was going to cease. Abel Dunn got killed. The first murder in scripture. I believe, personally, and I, I and we I believe we prove it in the Serpent Seed uh, Doctrine video, which I'll link in the description box, okay? Um, I personally believe that all of Cain's bloodline was extinguished in the flood. That's what I personally believe. Okay, I'll link the video for the Serpent Seed Doctrine in this video. Okay, um, praise the Lord, He gave me that uh, video, by the way. But Abel got killed, first murder in Scripture, and Cain's line, I personally believe, was extinguished from the flood. People will argue, well, what about Noah and his wives? Okay, you can argue that, but there again, 
the line of Seth, remember? Seth in Genesis chapter 5, okay, verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness, fallen, sinful, after his image. Whose image? We're made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body, okay? And called his name Seth, okay? And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years. And he begat sons and daughters. And the gene pool was pure, remember, uh, uh, incest. There was no worry, really, about uh, mutation and that kind of stuff, which happens today when people are... This, okay? Okay? The gene pool was far more pure, even after the flood. Okay? Even after. Okay? But he had sons and daughters. So, it's safe to say that Noah, who is descended from Shem, by the way, in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the one of Joseph and of Mary, and in the book of First Chronicles, um, show me the continuation of the bloodline of Cain and of Abel. It ain't there. Because Cain and Abel, both, first two issue of Adam and Eve were extinct. Abel murdered. Cain's line extinguished in the flood. That is what I believe. Until someone show me otherwise uh, through scripture, I'm going to hold to that. Okay? So, what about Noah's wife and his son's wives? Uh, from the line of Seth, after after this, in Genesis chapter 5, he begat sons and daughters. Is there a possibility that one of the wives had a, a from the line of Cain? Maybe. Maybe. I, like I said, I personally believe that the line of Cain died in the flood. But remember, Seth was a, a son, a born... In Adam's likeness, what does that mean? Sinful. Okay? You with me so far? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Amen. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world, yea, hath God said, the serpent, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, the red dragon, okay? <laughs> and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Jesus, God our Father, is the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. But also, remember what we've already looked at. Jesus Christ, God our Father, cannot sin. Satan tempted his flesh. You know, the flesh that you guys, uh, you guys, you Catholics worship so much, okay? Satan's temptation was aimed at the flesh. Because... God cannot be tempted with evil. But God manifests in flesh. The flesh can be tempted. Oh, absolutely. Let's continue. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God 
in the face of Jesus Christ. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Image and glory of God. Verse 6 in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Man is the glory of God. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, not Hebrews. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And this here, this one ought to make my friend from England happy. Go on, say it a couple times to yourself. Why don't you there, my dear, dear friend from England? Please. Uh, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I've also done a video on this, um, talking about the context of it. Okay? Just because you can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh doesn't mean you're saved. Confession doesn't mean anything. 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 under verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. False prophets is the centerpiece of what is being talked about here, the context. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Is that spirit of Antichrist. In context, it's talking about false prophets. Those who preach. Those who teach. Okay? Uh, I, if I remember, I'll put the video on 1 John chapter 4 in the, con in the description box. Okay? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, his seed remaineth in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that circumcision made without hands, okay? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The little g-god of this world, Satan. We are in the world, not of the world, remember? Okay? They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay? And also Romans chapter 8. Of course we had to go there. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, abiding in him, okay? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Law of sin and death. Bound to the skin suit. Without Christ, you cannot have any hope. 
without Christ, uh, good luck trying to overcome sin in your life. Oh, you can do it for a while. Some people, out, out of their own works, out of their own flesh, can quit drinking and do many things. But to, to abstain from all appearance from evil, you know, you, you need Christ. You can do nothing outside of Christ, okay? For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the flesh profiteth nothing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself, even said that. Okay? God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And that flesh is what Satan tempted. That flesh is sinful. Why do you say that? Our Lord said it himself. The flesh profiteth nothing. It's the blood that was shed on the cross, remember? The flesh profiteth nothing. And in the likeness of likeness of sinful flesh God cannot be tempted to do evil God cannot sin Jesus Christ never sinned but the word that was made flesh the flesh itself oh boy yeah yeah that's why you got a big problem with that Catholic And look at the, the, I mean, look at how finite, or excuse me, um, how final, excuse me, how final that is. Excuse me. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, because of sin, condemns sin in the flesh. See, Jesus Christ, God our Father, did what no man can ever do. He lived on earth in flesh and never sinned. Doesn't matter what kind of um, sanctification, what kind of order, what kind of whatever you do to sanctify your flesh, your flesh will never be sinless. Until, like we already read, that flesh, when you die, you put uh, the the old, you know, you die and then you are, you know, have a new body, the resurrection. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Also to James chapter 3. Similitude. Or similitude or whatever. James chapter 3. One verse. James chapter 3. Verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Similar. Similitude. First appearance of similitude. Uh, Numbers chapter 12. Go there. Numbers chapter 12. First appearance of similitude. Or similitude. 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 Whatever. Numbers chapter 12 verse 8. The first appearance of similitude. Actually, let's read verses 7 and 8. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. A type of Christ, Moses. With him will I speak, mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. The similitude of the Lord. 
What does that mean? The similitude of the Lord. Likeness. You look that up in Webster's. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? I will speak with, with him will I speak mouth to mouth. Even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Therewith, James chapter uh, 3, verse 9, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Who did Moses see? He saw God. Godhead, which is comprised of spirit, soul, and body, made in the image of God. Let's finish with Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 18... On to verse 23. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. What does that mean? You have a spirit, soul, and body. The complex working of yourselves your immune system, your lungs, your heart, your brain. Look outside your door. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? We are in the likeness of Adam, meaning fallen, sinful man. But his seed, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed unto the day of redemption, his seed remaineth in you. You have an unction from the Holy One. Get it? Okay? Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, we're so much smarter because of, we believe in evolution. The religion of evolution. We are so much cautious and care for other people because we believe in the religion of the poison crown. You know when you're worshiping men, when you're worshiping man, especially when you look at advertisements and disgusting pornography, you, you, you're, you're idolizing, you're drooling over flesh. And it's Satan, okay, who um, uh, Satan prefers the things of men rather than of God. I just brad that. Verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. And to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Let's read to verse 25. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust, lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. You're made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. Not in his likeness, nor in his similitude. No. We're in the likeness of fallen Adam. 
Okay? But we're made in the image of God. Okay? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And that is uh, talked about in verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. And when that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed after we, the church of the living God, be uh, resurrected, redeemed, uh, the whole world is going to worship a man. Okay? So, Jesus, what, is that, what does that say in James chapter 3? Verse 9 again, James chapter 3, verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And Christ, Jesus, is the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body, and God cannot sin. Okay? Okay? But we, unlike the Lord, we sin. John chapter 1. Verse 7 on to verse 10. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a sinner. Yeah. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, I'm a new creature. I'm sinlessly perfect. Yeah, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Two, even though they sound similar, they're addressing two different things. Verse 8, someone before salvation. Verse 9, someone after salvation. Okay? That is going to be it for this video, brethren. Um, like I said, my best friend, our best friend, and uh, a dearly, dearly beloved sister brought this uh, to my attention. Uh, well, my, bro uh, my best friend and I, we talked about it. And uh, our best friend, excuse me. And uh, I was dumbfounded. And then a dearly, dearly beloved sister made a comment in a video. It's like, and then the Lord opened this up onto me and said, whoa. So hopefully this helps about the image of God versus the image of man. Image of man, not really in there, is it? That's going to be it for this video. That's two videos in one day. So, thank you very much, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. We love you. Thank you so much for those of you who pray for us, who um, help us. Thank you. Thank you. We are your servants, and we love you all very, very much. Even those whom we have parted company with and uh, no longer will fellowship with. We still love you. So. Thank you. Hope this, hope this helps. And um, thank you for watching. If you do, we love you. We'll see you in the next video.